Pillow, give us a better name. How about Rocketeer? Rocketeer? That's swell. It is often said that the best way to understand a person is to take a look at what that individual has left behind. This impressive monument to the life of one man is the largest airplane ever built, the Spruce Goose. And it sits here in its immense home in Long Beach, California. Its creator was Howard Hughes, a genius whose aircraft design and experimentation changed the course of aviation history. To Cliff Secord, the rocketeer, Howard Hughes played a very important role as well. He was, quite simply, the father of the rocket pack. Howard Hughes, man of action. Drop the ladder! I designed the Cirrus X3. What was it like, strapping that thing to your back? It was the closest I'll ever get to heaven, Mr. Hughes. Where's my rocket pack, Secord? Nothing to it, Howard, just basic aviation. Heroic flyer, adventurer, and designer, Howard Hughes was at the forefront of the aviation world in his day, and the aircraft he built anticipated the future. We had several of the space shuttle astronauts down here touring the Spruce Goose, and they pointed out things that are still used in the space shuttle and on large aircraft today. The Spruce Goose was built nearly 50 years ago and flown only once. Yet it is still the largest winged object ever to have left the Earth's surface. Just how possible would it have been for a daring innovator like Howard Hughes, or any of his contemporaries for that matter, to have conceived of and built the ultimate flying device, a rocket-powered backpack? the fastest planes and broke all of the aviation speed records of his day. And even though a lot is known about Hughes, there are still quite a few mysteries. There are quite a few things that Hughes aircraft developed that people don't know about. Hughes was incredibly ahead of his time. He always tried to be on the forefront and to use the latest in technology. If such a rocket pack actually existed, it would be the type of machine people might die trying to possess and would certainly end up pitting nations against one another, as the rocketeer finds out. The German experiment didn't seem like much to worry about, but when we got our hands on this next film, we realized the scope of their plan. Keep watching, kid. It cost a man's life to get this out of Germany. It's the ultimate showdown for the Rocketeer when he's forced to protect more than just the rocket pack against Nazi invaders. going on in there. Use near a push. I like it. Flying on one's own. Well, the experience ranges from machines like this gyroplane, no wings involved, to the purest and simplest form of flight, hang gliding. With a wing and a little wind, you can soar like a bird. I feel, I feel fine. One hitch, 
The first step could be a 500-foot drop. Okay, goodbye. Oh, oh my God. Okay, okay. Holy cow. A tandem flight is recommended for pilots in training. Gliding like this realizes a dream of flight that's existed since the beginning of time. My folks are never, ever going to believe that I did this. With the gyroplane, it's one flyer, one engine, and a step closer to soaring like the rocketeer. Ken, what is a gyroplane? There's two rotorcraft ratings in this country, and one is a helicopter, and the other is a gyroplane. And both of them uh, have rotor blades, but the, that's where the similarity ends. It flies more like a fixed-wing aircraft. See a high-wing airplane you can't see up, and a low-wing airplane you can't see down, but this you can see you're like in a sphere. Almost as if you were flying without a plane. That's correct. You have to be a trained pilot to step into this flying chair that travels close to 100 miles per hour. With tons of fresh air blasting against the pilot and a 360-degree view, it's easy to see why they call it a flying freedom machine. No pilot's license required here. This may be the closest step towards a machine designed for just about anyone to fly. These are the paraplanes of coastal flight in Santa Ynez, California. Just imagine yourself. It's like a flying dream. You just sit down, push the throttle forward, and away you go. The more you think, the more time you have to get yourself into trouble. So we bring you down quick, and we bring you down hard. So don't worry about how easily or how hard you land. It's going to be a tough landing anyway. OK. Basically, I'm in a shopping cart with an engine and a bed sheet. I guess this proves anyone can fly. None of the stunts in the Rocketeer could have prepared me for this. 